Welcome everybody to today's um, short credit scoring webinar to highlight the importance of understanding credit scoring. Meet Jim Perkins, a seasoned mortgage banking professional with over 30 years of experience with New Ameri American funding currently. Jim isn't just highly experienced and respected in real estate financing. He's also an exceptional trainer unraveling the intricacies and complexi complexities of real estate loans and credit. His ability and training empowers clients to navigate the mortgage process confidently, ensuring they secure the best fit mortgage for their needs. Jim is a very valued member of our company, Cindy Bishop Worldwide, which is a real estate training company, where agents and consumers consistently rate him very highly, as reflected in numerous positive feedback sheets that we receive. Welcome, Jim. Well, thank you, Cindy, and welcome, everybody, to our brief webinar today on credit scores. And it's presented to you by Cindy Bishop Worldwide, and I'm Jim Perkins, that will be reviewing the information with you today. So we're going to be talking about credit scores. And what we're going to review today is what credit scores, um, what they indicate. We're going to talk a little bit about the range of credit scores, good credit scores, and what's considered a bad credit score. The three major credit reporting agencies, we'll discuss a little bit about them and how they get the information to run their credit scores, and then how the credit scores are actually calculated. The different types of credit scores, the credit scoring systems, and then how credit scores impact a person when they're getting a mortgage. And then what can be done to help improve your credit scores. There's a number of things. So we wanna dive right into it and let's go by, let's discuss now what does the credit score indicate? So credit scores provide the best guide to future risk based solely on the credit report data. The higher the score, the lower the risk. So higher scores mean less risk, lower scores are increased risk. So this means that a credit score is a predictor of how a person is going to make their payments in the future. So this gives a credit provider a powerful tool to use in granting credit. So your banks, your mortgage companies, um, anybody that's providing you credit, credit card companies, um, you know, car loans, um, they're looking at a credit score. And that credit score, remember now, it's just a snapshot in time. So it can be changed, but you have to know what to do in order to change it. But these predictors are very accurate. And because they are so accurate, it's something that has gained a lot of traction in the uh, credit markets as far as providing credit to uh, the consumer. So <clears throat> your credit scores, and this, this kind of gives you a range. So depending on the scoring system that's being used, a very bad credit score would go from 300 to 599. And then you can see a poor credit score, 600 to 650, fair, 650 to 699, a good, as you get into the 700, 700 to 749, very good, 750 to 799, and excellent, 800 to 850. Now, you'll see, uh, we see that a person, uh, we don't see too many people that have their credit scores up in the 800s. Now, when we're doing a mortgage, we'll usually get three uh, individual credit scores from the different credit reporting agencies. And uh, every once in a while, we'll see somebody that has you know credit score, maybe one credit score in the 800s, sometimes two, but it's very rare that we see somebody that has a credit score uh, from all three repositories in the 800s. So if you're in that range, that means you're doing very, very well. Okay, so the three major credit reporting agencies, so who are they? They're Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And so what happens is, they will be providing uh, the, from a mortgage perspective, they're providing the mortgage credit report uh, to us or the information that is run through the, uh, the grading system or the algorithms for the mortgage credit report, which gives us our credit score. And so depending on the type of financing you're getting, whether it's a mortgage or a car loan or a credit card, they each have different types of credit scoring systems. So it may change a little bit, but they're all getting the uh, 
uh, base information from uh, these repositories. Now, some of the credit creditors will only use one or two of these, but from a mortgage perspective, we're looking at getting a credit score from all three. So where does the information come from? Well, the information that they are gathering, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, comes from the creditors. So if it's a bank or a company that has the a uh, car loan, they are reporting that, uh, how your payment history is with them. Credit cards, uh, mortgages, uh, any type of credit that you're getting uh, will be reported uh, to these credit reporting agencies. And then based on who is actually pulling the credit and what they're using it for, will determine the type of scoring system that it will go through. So now, uh, the <clears throat> how's your credit score calculated? So and this is, uh, we're looking at mainly from a mortgage uh, credit perspective, uh, but what you're looking at, 35%, the largest component is your payment history. So they're looking at how you're making your payments over the history of you having credit. Now, one thing that people don't are not aware of is that when you are making payments, it doesn't ding you or hit you on your credit report until it goes past 30 days late. So what you can actually do, say if you're having challenges making your payments, and say if you have a car loan that's due on the 5th, and then uh, if you make it before the 5th of the following month, it won't show up as being a late on your credit report. Because a credit report shows uh, 30 days late, and then uh, 60 days late, and then 90 days late. So if you, like say, you, you're late, you make it 15 days late, it'll, you'll still get hit with the late fee, and sometimes you can get that wave, but it won't ding you on your credit and your credit scores until you go past or at that 30-day time frame. So that's something that's real important to remember, especially if you're trying to make sure that your credit scores stay high. Now, the next large percentage or cut of the pie is 30% is the amount owed. Amounts owed. And what they're looking at mainly on that is the amounts owed compared to the available credit. And they're looking at um, a lot of this is looking at the revolving credit that you have available to you. So the examples that I always use is say if you have two credit cards and each credit card you have a $5,000 limit. And on one credit card you have a zero balance and the other credit card you have a $3,000 balance. So they're looking at two aspects of this. One is the 3,000 of the 10,000 available credit, which is 30%. And they're looking at the 3,000 of the one card, uh, which is 5,000, which is 60%. So sometimes people will say, you know, I'm not using that other card. It has a zero balance. I'm just going to close it. Just by that one act of closing it, you're now your ratio went from 30%, which is 3,000 of 10,000, to 60%, which is 3,000 of the 5,000. And what that is going to do is impact your scores. Generally speaking, they say you wanna keep that credit score or that percentage uh, below, I'd say 20%, 25%. I've seen it impact somebody's score as low as 15%. So you really wanna keep that percentage as low as you can in order to make sure that you're not getting dinged on your credit score. So the two types that we mainly see is a FICO score versus a Vantage score. Now, sometimes we'll see somebody that will come to us for a mortgage and they'll say, oh yeah, my credit score is 750. And when we run it on the FICO system, uh, it might come out to like say 720. And if people say, well, how come it's different? Well, if you think about it, the Vantage score is a much more, um, I'd say newer version of the FICO scoring system. So the FICO scoring system, if you think about, like, say, Windows, when Windows first came out, it was Windows 1, 2, 3, I think it's like Windows 10 now, but it's the same way with the credit scoring systems. So the mortgage industry uses an older uh, version, which is more conservative. The Vantage score system or the system that you would use, like, say, if you get it from your credit card or credit karma, is usually uh, using the more advanced or newer versions which don't account uh, for certain things like down there. Like you can see down here that medical collections under $100 are not scored or collections under $100 not scored. And so they're looking at different things and not dinging the person for as much 
um, uh, or credit for like different things, like say collections that on a FICO score could hit you pretty hard as far as your credit score is concerned. So now we wanted to move into, uh, to give you an idea of the impact of your credit score and when you're looking for a mortgage and how it's going to affect you. So we've got three examples here. And this one is going to show you the example of the rate, what's going to hit you as far as the rate is concerned. So now it's 740 and above. We're saying it's at six and three quarters, and that would be at zero points or no cost to you. Now, when you go to 720 to 739, and each of these categories are what we call buckets. So you can see as you go down to 720 to 739, the interest rate goes up to six and seven eighths. So one eighth of a percent. 700 to 719 is now 7%. So it increased a quarter percent in the interest rate. Now, if you go into 680 to 699, it's up to seven and a quarter. So you can see as it goes lower, you're getting hit harder as far as the credit, uh, excuse me, as far as the interest rate is concerned. They're charging a higher rate. 660 to 679, it's seven and a half. 640 to 659, it's seven and three quarters. And it's 620 to 639 at 8%. So you can see it's considerable difference of what you get charged, assuming you don't want to pay any points to keep the rate that same. Now, there are programs that will allow you to go below the 620, but then you're going to get hit even more on the interest rate. And then if you decide, like this next slide, will show you uh, the cost to keep the rate the same. So this example we're looking at is it six and three uh, six and three quarters and putting three percent down? So at seven forty and above, the cost is let's say zero points. And as you go down to the lower bucket, six twenty to six thirty nine, seven fifty, seven hundred to seven nineteen, two thousand two hundred fifty, from six eighty to six ninety nine, three thousand, then from six sixty to six seventy nine, six thousand from 640 to 659, 7,500, and then from 620 to 639, $8,500. So a considerably uh, higher cost than if you had your credit scores were considerably higher. So sometimes we'll get people that their credit score might be like say uh, 718. Uh, and then what we wanna do is try to work with them to try and get it up to uh, above the 720 or possibly even the 740 depending on where uh, or what the credit profile looks like. So it is something that can be changed because remember the credit score is just a snapshot in time. So the one impact, this next slide shows you the cost of what it would cost you for PMI. Now PMI, private mortgage insurance is impacted or you get that when you're putting less than 3% down on a conventional loan. So not an FHA or VA or USDA loan or some other type of loan program. So you can see that now they, uh, PMI is basically insurance that protects the lender a certain percentage based on your down payment, but it protects them against the possibility of foreclosure. And it doesn't give them 100% protection, but there is some type of insurance that the borrower pays for. So you can see it's six, 760 and above and you get the best rate. It's $145 a month. And you can see as you go down 740 to 759, it goes to 175, 720 to 739, 217, 700 to 719, 247, and then 680 to 699, 302, 660 to 679, 378, 640 to 659, $412, and then 620 to 639, $465. So you can see there's a dramatic difference between the lowest credit score and then the highest credit score. And if you think about it, just like say your car insurance, uh, they consider a credit score that is lower, much riskier, just like somebody that has had a lot of car accidents. You're going to get charged a lot more uh, for your car insurance, as opposed to somebody with a higher credit score would be compared to somebody that has never had an accident and they're going to get a much better rate. So it can make a big difference as far as the credit score. Even if you're just moving up a bucket or two, it can make a difference depending on the type of loan program that you're getting. So delinquencies today are the highest that they've ever been, and people are drowning from debt. And it's because 
that uh, that debt that they have, they're not able to qualify for a mortgage and purchase a home. So it's becoming very, very challenging uh, for people, especially when they're looking uh, to get a mortgage. And so what can be done? So as a lender, I have some tools. Um, our credit reporting uh, companies that we use uh, provide us some tools. One is a credit expert. And what that does is say if we have a certain amount of money to work with, uh, it'll basically uh, identify the accounts to put that money toward to lower the balances and give us an idea of what uh, the score could be. Now we could tell it, say, hey, uh, right now they're at 680 or say 685 and we'd like to get it above 700. It'll kind of give us an idea of how much we need to spend and what accounts to put it on in order to get that score up there. Now they're estimating, but usually it works out pretty close. And then the what if scenarios are, I can do certain things where I can say, hey, close this account. Um, what if um, if we close that account or if we pay down this account or move this ac account or add a person as an authorized borrower, how is that going to impact the scores? So those are uh, two of the basic tools that we can use in order to do that. Um, and now not all lenders will do or use those type of um uh, a, a tools that they have because they get charged a fee for it. And they can't pass it on to the consumer. So if you're working with a lender and you're trying to get your scores up, uh, make sure that they'll be able to use those type of uh, tools or able to use those or will use those for you. And then, so if it's really bad, then what we would normally do is send them to a credit repair company. And then a credit repair company, depending on who they are, if you're interested in getting some more information on a credit repair company, feel free to give me a call or reach out to me on an email and I'll be able to review with you uh, a good credit repair company and how it can benefit you. Other than that, that's our, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Cindy Bishop Worldwide or me, Jim Perkins at New American Funding. There's my phone number and email address. Thank you so much for coming and we appreciate it. And remember, uh, it's presented to you by Cindy Bishop Worldwide, a real estate education um, school that will provide education for realtors, but also for consumers. Feel free to go to her website and get additional information. Thank you for coming again.